Hi guys, welcome back to my podcast. Again, you're listening to the Traveling Pants of a Single Mom, and my name is Natasha. Today I have a special guest, one of my friends, a co-worker, her son, Xavier. He is 16 and he's a sophomore. And we're going to be talking about kind of like a similar vibe to Talene's episode where we're talking about growing pains. You know, how does it feel to be raised by a single mom, especially being a boy, not having that male figure around. So we're just going to get into some stuff and, you know, hash out how he really feels. And I feel like it's a good segue to Talene's episode. We had a teenage girl point of view and now we get a teenage young man's point of view so say hey Xavier. hello how are you i'm fine how are you today i am good and i'm happy you took the time out to come be a part of my podcast thank you of course so do you want to tell a little bit about yourself to start off uh my name is Xavier walker uh i manage a basketball team at my school i play football well about to play football again mm-hmm. and it's about to work I just got my first job so yeah you got your first job and where do you where um how do you feel you know that you have your first job I, I think it's better because I have my own money instead of knocking my mom's door and it's asking for five dollars right it's, it's gonna feel good right okay that's what's <clears throat> up so how does it feel? Let's get in. Let's, let's get right into it. Growing up by a single mom, being raised by a single mom. Uh, I th- consensus was my only parent. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of sucked because because other kids at my school had both, both parents, and I felt like I, I was missing out for a, a small portion of my life. Right, right. And well, as a kid, I didn't know no better, so I would think. Uh, that my dad was like some important figure because you know watching tv as a little kid it tells right. you like your dad was his superhero or something right right but you know as i got older i thought i learned and i met him and it was different so right right right, right. so um with your dad not being a part like how did that affect you uh, as a kid, I, I knew I used it as an excuse to say why I was mad and why I was always upset. So, and I used like, I don't have a dad. Right. And most people like myself who don't have dads either try to find a gap in that, in that area mm-hmm. or they look to their mom a little more than they should right. for, you know, a fatherly figure, even though they, they may or may not get it. Right. And do you think your mom was able to embody that, like what you were looking for from a dad not completely but luckily enough i was able to have my uncle Mm -hmm. and my grandfather my two uncles and my grandfather to fill that gap for me wow that's good that's good that's good when you have at least somebody there that you can lean on and even though it's not dad but you know you have that guy to go to to answer questions and concerns that you may have now, you talked a little bit, you did touch base on seeing other families, like, that have mom and dad present. Like, how, you know, like, how did it make you feel, though? Like, did you feel like, you know, is this how life's supposed to be? Did it make you feel, you know, like, what was that vibe you got when, you, when you're around people that have, have mommy and daddy? Well, I thought uh, people who had moms and dads, I thought, like, oh, life, they have a bigger house than I do. They have this more than I, than I do. They have two parents, so they should mm-hmm. have more than they, so they have more than I do and have a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. So their mom is at work or their dad is at work. And, well, either one of them can help them out. It's like, cause if my mom's at work or busy or something like that and I need her, I'm kind of in a bad situation. But right. If I had a dad or someone else to like a father figure to fill that role, I'll be I'll be okay. But right, and I think Talene, when we had our episode on um, Dear Mama, I think she touched base on that too. Is like, as a mom, you're only one person. So like, if you need where your mom is not there to kind of like guide you or help you at that moment, you know, being able to like call that other parent. You know, dad and say, oh, dad, this is what's going on. You know, she felt like, you know, but you know, you have to understand though, 
we we see things at the surface like and we may think that the grass is greener not saying that having both parents isn't a plus like you should want that but even though it's two parents in a situation kids still go through like things that you go through or even worse because sometimes things is not even gravy you may look crazy on the outside but those kids are sometimes going through hell because maybe their parents stayed together for them and they really don't even like each other and they argue every day you know like they're always at each other's heads you know sometimes we can't look at other people's situations and feel like you know ooh, they might like you said have a bigger house than me or you know I can call him if mommy's not around and stuff like that but I can totally understand wanting two parents around is like who wouldn't want that you know what I'm saying it's like having a relationship with especially as a boy you know like I'm sure there's things that you feel like you've missed out because he hasn't been there. Like some things at school, I wish I can go to my father or someone like that mm-hmm. and tell them about this, but I can't go to my mom and say say this because it might seem inappropriate to her or uh-huh. something other. And it kind of sucks because I can't tell anyone else around me because my friends are asleep and my mom's here and my brother doesn't understand. So. Because right. your brother is how old? He's eight. Okay. So. <laughs> So how is that for you having an eight-year-old brother? At first, when I was young, young and well, it, it sucked because, well, as a single child for eight years, I thought, oh, us, oh, I'm going to get, be a boss of somebody, mm-hmm. and my life is going to be just as just better. Right. No, it, like I saw my mom less and less. Uh, she worked later, so I saw her a lot less. Mm-hmm. And I ended up being spending more time with my brother than I think I should have because I spent a lot of time taking care of him. Right, right, right. And I stayed after school to make sure he would be at, be okay. At, um, no, I, I stayed at home a lot longer to make sure he was okay at home. Right, 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 right. It's kind of like you're, like, as I said with Talene, because I think she feels the same way. You know, Sky is just turned three. She's 14. I, I call it like she's mommy number two because... You know, it's like where I, and it kind of sucks, you know, again, if you had that partner, that dad, you know, or that, you know, other parent there, they could pick up the extra slack that you feel like you probably shouldn't have to do because you're like, I'm the brother, you know, like I'm, I'm a teenager myself, but I guess that has to suck. You have to really play that role. Like you have to do extra things that you may not want to do. Or feel like you shouldn't have to do, but you know you're there. You have to help your mom out. Like, do you have any like? Do you feel any type of way like having to take that extra step or be that role? I think he's given, taught me a little bit of responsibility mm-hmm. to watch someone else that's younger than me and needs a lot of care. Mm-hmm. I think it really helped me learn something about well, someday I may own a kid, and that like a good help. I mean, like a good stepping stone towards that right, or right. babysitting someone so you know how to take care of a younger child right, you know right. how to take ch- like change a diaper That's- right like I always tell Tali like I said if anything happens to me God forbid you know how to take care of your sister like you know what she needs you know you know everything that is going on in her life so you are able to you know be there for her and and not you know because it's kind of hard like something happened to me and i'm like oh my god where's sky gonna go not saying she's still young so she can't obviously take care of a child but she will know what her sister needs and you know have that understanding well like one thing that was you know my mom played a dirty trick on me one day (laughs) um we were on a cruise with my little brother we went to san juan Mm mm-hmm my mom um, went for a walk around San Juan while I took my brother back to the cruise ship. Mm-hmm. My mom then called me 30 minutes later saying that she was robbed, but she oh. wasn't. Oh. It t- in my mind, I thought if she was wa- robbed, she would not have her phone. But I w- I'm also thinking that my mom would not say something this 
horrible to me while I'm on a cruise ship with my brother right. across the seas. Right. So I'm th- so I'm I found out three different ways to get her back to the boat and replace her her cards and stuff like that. And I'm th- looking at my brother because their boat's about leaving one one hour. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the good thing my brother was old enough. Right. So it's like, cause he was crying, I was worried, trying to make sure he doesn't get like start to get break down on the boat and not move no more. Right. Okay. So why did she do that? And at what point did you realize she was playing? When after I called my after I called my aunt and uncle Uncle Kedrick and Aunt, aunt Tamika. Mm-hmm. After I after I called them and thought about it on my way down, rushing downstairs mm-hmm. in my pajamas <laughs> to to the um customer services uh-huh. I thought about it and like I speaking to the guy and like this could be a joke <sighs> and I but just in case is there a way to get my mom back to the boat mm-hmm. without her ID right what was her what was the purpose of her doing that she said she thought I didn't miss her enough or something like that I can't with Lena <laughs> What? So she, so she didn't come out and say, hey, baby, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. She didn't, like... When I saw her, I was really mad, but I was at the same time relieved. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was a prank, but at, but something else in my mind said, this is this could be serious and something important. Right. I need Lena to get her life together. <laughs> Talk about she didn't think you... What? What she expected you to do to miss her? Like, what she wanted you to do? We blowing her phone up? I mean, if, if, on the cruise, I did not really go back to the room oh, that much. I mean, why would you? Like, it's a cruise. I'm sure you was living it up, having you a good old time. Oh, yeah. I could imagine. Like, and you guys travel a lot. That's good. If you guys go different places. And, you you know, that's awesome. You know, you see, being in a single home, at least she tries to... Um, expose you guys to different things in different places. So that's awesome. Um, let's go into, because we talked a little bit about your dad. Do you have a relationship with him at all? Uh, I have somewhat of a relationship had mm-hmm. as in past tense. Wow, okay. Um, I met him, I think, when I was around 11. Mm-hmm. And I'm 16 now. And I've known him for a little while over the years. But he's been in and out of state. Mm-hmm. And the most I've seen him recently was around, like last year when I was 15. Mm-hmm. And, well, I've got to know him, know him a little better. But as I was, as I got to know him, um, he started talk, asked, talking to me and asking me. Because he smoked a lot. Like, mm-hmm. too much. And that was after my grandfather had passed from smoking. Right, right. And I told him not to ask him, not told him, but asked him to do not to do it because it can cause some serious problems. Right. And he said, okay, but I wasn't, I knew he wasn't going to stop. stop right. So, <laughs> but what really got me about him is that he was too much of a player. He was with, staying with another woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and was going to, and took me to a place to see another, to see a, someone else oh, altogether. Right. And then he was talking to me about I going getting back with my mother. So that kind of offended me, but mm-hmm. I didn't want to show it on my face or like say anything. Right, right, right. He was my right home. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So why did it offend you though? Like, after, because he spent most of my life in jail, so. Mm-hmm. And most of my sister's life in jail. So I was thinking, if he if he's trying to get back so quickly without trying to earn respect of me or my mother first, right, right, right. before he can even move in with us or something. Right. So it just kind of, like, bothered me. Right. And like, after a while, I grew more distant with him and I ended up blocking him on all types of ways. And we ended up moving so he doesn't know where I am. Oh, okay. So... You said you blocked him, like, just... Altogether. But why? You you don't want that? Like, not... I mean, I guess you would want it the, the right way. The right influence, right? But is it not something that you feel is worth trying to... Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but mm-hmm. it was something else. He then called one... I forgot. He then one day called me because he was talking to me a lot. My mother told me a way a long time ago in the past that he owed a lot in child support. Mm-hmm. And, well, he then called me one day asking me if I can sway my mother into taking him off of child support. Wow. So I said, okay, I'll talk to her. And then, I, and then he hung up. So, yeah. all right. And I told mom about it. And then she was like, this face, what, the look on her face was straight disgust. Right, right, right. Because she talked to me about it. 
And that, that shouldn't even be your responsibility. That shouldn't be something that, you know... And then that made me think about, mm-hmm. like, it, did he only talk to me just to get him off child support? Right, right. So it made you feel like you don't even want to deal with that. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like... I'm not just going to say dads, because you have some dads that are single parents, and you have some, you know, moms that are single parents, but I feel like people need to own up and take responsibility for, you know, the decisions they made. It's not your fault as a child. You know, you didn't ask to ask to be here, you know? And these actions are just so hurtful, not just for your child, but as the mom, you know? Because me as a single mom, when things are not the way Talim would want it from her dad, I have to, you know, see the hurt. And I'm sure for your mom as well, like, you not having him around, like, when you feel some type of way about certain things, your mom, she's hurting inside, too. She might not say it to you, like, you know. Or maybe she do. I don't know how close, you know, deep you guys talk, but, you know, maybe she do. But what is some of the things you would tell your dad, like, the awesomeness that he has missed out on? I think the things I think you'll miss out on is me going to fo- play football. Because all my life, I've been a really tall, big kid. Mm-hmm. And so, it's, and I got that mostly from him, really. Mm-hmm. And he knows it. He knows that I was going to be a really big kid. And mostly, he missed out on my foot home. Like me playing football, having fun, growing up. Yeah. And my, and my baby brother. Right, right, right. It's just so much. How would you describe your relationship with your mom? I think my relationship was with my mom, uh, cause I, my mom de- deemed me one day the man of the house, but <laughs> not exactly the owner of the house. Right, right, right. Cause I'm, you know, I'm under eighteen, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Her son. So I think my relationship with my mom is very close. Right, right. Like if, cause only help she has is from her friends, mm-hmm. my aunt. Some family and my uncles. Mm-hmm. And that's not fair. Like, it's not like she's going to them asking them for money all the time because she doesn't like to ask people for help. Right, right. Lena work hard. <laughs> yeah, she tried to pull something upstairs when we're moving. <laughs> I looked at her for a good five minutes until she told me to do it. <laughs> so, give me more about your relationship with your mom. Like, how does how does it how does your relationship make you feel? Like, what how does has it mold you? Like, give me some more details about your mom and the impact she has on you. I think she has, like, the most impact on me. Because, mm-hmm. well, every, most of all I know is from her. Like, how to respect people in public. How to yeah. say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Um, how to shake, to shake somebody's hand, to uh, dress properly, and not to go out and speak in slang. Mm-hmm. I act completely different without my mom, without adults around. I know, right. I know most people do. Yeah. So, but when I'm around adults or with my mom or something like that, I will change it completely how I act, and like subconsciously without even knowing it. Right, 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 right. right. But mostly how she impacted me is how I look at the world and how I walk down the street. Right, 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 right. I like that. I'm, and I know your mom. She she go hard for her boys. She go hard for you guys. Because I've known her, I don't even know how many years now, but it's been a minute since I've been in Lena's life. Um, what, are there any things that you're struggling with in, in your life? Like, what are some of the things you struggle with? Being a teenage boy, you know, like, being with, you know, having your eight-year-old brother, being a teenager, being in high school, playing for like, what are some of your struggles, your daily struggles? My daily struggles. Most of my daily struggles, I think, would be with social skills. So I don't like to yell. Because mm-hmm. when I was younger, I used to be really mean, always yelling. But now I grew up, I became more docile because of the way I looked at the world, media, my, what my mom told me. Mm-hmm. So I like I grew up instead of being all mad and a big boy yelling, right, right, right. I, I grew a softer voice instead. Right. So. so how do you look at the world? You said that twice. Like how do you look at the world? I see. I look at the world as in, if you don't know them, they will not help you. Mm-hmm. If they do know them, they may help you. Mm-hmm. 
And if they're a total stranger, don't help them. And, and they won't help you at all. Right. Okay. And are there any personal struggles? I'll say mostly as a teenage boy in high school. I think my only struggle I think would be girls. Cause, oh. cause boys, most boys, they look at me and they turn and they don't and just don't mess with me. That because really. you're big. Like how tall are you? Like you're. I think I'm six six. No. You're six six. You're six. You're sixteen and six six. Oh my god, I can't. You're like super tall. Like so, I know them boys don't play. They don't even try. Like they look at you and be like, I'm not even messing with him. But if they got to know me. They will know I'm a. Kind of gentle giant. Yeah. <laughs> you are. You are. You're such a sweetheart. Like, so what are your struggles with the girls? Let me know. The thing is, I don't, because uh, some things that, like, made me confused, like, people are in my high school, like, doing it in the bathroom. They're doing it. Um, what do you mean doing it? You know, having, you know, sexual intercourse. In high school? In the bathroom. And in middle school, they did it in the bathrooms, too. Someone was pregnant in middle school, and in seventh grade, someone else was pregnant. And, wow, they and ain't I, playing no games in high school now. No, not, and um, now I know this boy who has had sex with at least eight different girls. Wow. And he, and one time he did it in the <coughs> in a constru- in a in construction class mm-hmm. in the shed where we hold hold some wood in there. And he did it in there, in some bathrooms. Oh, my God. And now they're, like, trying to keep track of, like... Where and... Like, well, it's, like it's basically, like, a, who has more of this or who did more of this to the race. <laughs> so, I'm assuming you're not that type of guy. No, I'm still a virgin. Oh, wow. Really? That's good. High five. That's good. So, like, are you... You wanting to, like, wait until, like, what it... I mean, it's good to wait till you married, and is that what that is that your expectation? No, I just know that I can either catch it some type of disease, mm-hmm. or I can get it mixed in with the wrong girl. Mm, yes, you don't want to get mixed in with the wrong girl. If you'll be out here messed up in the head, you have to have a good mind. So you can't be out here getting mixed up with the wrong girl. So you're not dating. No, I'm not. I'm still single. Still single. You're so handsome. So you're just staying away from the girls right now, just like not completely. No, mm-hmm. I do have a bunch of friends, but by actual, actually, my best friend is a girl. So okay, and then she just said you don't have no feelings for her. No, she already got she already got a boyfriend. She got a boyfriend, but if she ain't have no boyfriend, because you said she already have a boyfriend, so that means like, well, she's off limit limits because she already have a boyfriend. But if she didn't have a boyfriend, if she's she's still she's my best friend, so I wouldn't. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, so how long you guys been um, best friends? Two years. That's cool. That's cool. And let's go on to some more of these questions. So, have you ever struggled with depression? I have. Depression was a big thing in my life as a younger kid. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly during like my middle school years, because well, I was because when I got in middle school, I tried to try to control myself a little more. Mm-hmm. And well, when people was like say things to me like and insult me, I will try try to keep it quiet and keep it into myself, mm-hmm. and I'll be really like soft about it, be too soft about it, and too nice about it. And at, when I went home, I'll sometimes cry to myself mm-hmm. or like you know punch a wall. And so one day I did break the wall. I was kind of scared, so I put a painting over it. <laughs> Your mom saw it? No, she denied that. I, I hid it until I was still last year. Wow. <laughs> so the depression. So what did you, like, how did you get, are you over it? I'm over it now. You over it? Like, what did you do? Like, what helped you get through it? It was simple. It's what my grandfather said what happened in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. He predicted what was going to happen. He said, one day I'm going to get tired and I'm going to pop. Basically, mm-hmm. when I in seventh grade, I, it, it was worse because I was in the school and basically I was I was afraid to go to school and get shot. Basically, wow, why were you afraid? Because you have all these people 
who had sex, had drugs. One boy popped out the gate trying to fight this gang of people who I saw who was openly armed. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, yeah, I just didn't want to mess with that. And I just got tired of it and tired of it. So I went back to Robinswood. I just didn't care no more. Right. Like, I was a good, I was a good student to, to the teachers and the staff. And they knew that. So I've been there for a while. Right. And, well, as soon as someone like, tried to insult me or mess with me because they remembered me from sixth grade, mm-hmm. I snapped. I grabbed them. I choked them. I picked them up. Oh, wow. And, you, and so that snap, that, what, what? That set me over. And after that, it felt good. It felt good to be open <laughs> and not to be scared of anybody. And the teacher, and what made me smile the most is that the teachers looked at me and turned the other way like it never happened. Wow, because they knew like you were a good kid and they was pushing you. They kept pushing you and pushing you until you just couldn't take it anymore. Like, wow, that's crazy. So is that what helps you get over the depression? Like, just knowing that you... It's either my fault or theirs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Wow, so today's day in high school, you, you're no longer depressed. You're like... I'm also more open about it, but I'm trying to... Since this is high school, and if I fight somebody, mm-hmm. I can either go to jail and get sued. So I'm trying not to get... So you handle your depression with fighting? I used to. Mm-hmm. But now, I handle it differently because, you know, I have a phone now. Not what you're actually thinking. <laughs> I we'll, we'll talk about that later. Ah, I can't. Okay. So you have a phone now. Do you have social? Um, I have. Yes, I have a social life. I don't really mess around with social media because I think mm-hmm. I think I can really get lose a life. Not like literally lose a life, but lose my social life from it. Right. Yeah. Trust me. Don't get too caught up because I'm telling you, you become social you get into that social media, and it's like. That's all you do. Like, it's either Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, this, that, Snapchat. You know, it's like, oh, God. So when I get, like, so when I get someone's phone number, I'll just ask, I'll just ask for a phone number, really. Because, well, you can't do nothing else with a phone number except talk. Right. Like, call someone, text them, or FaceTime. Right, 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 right. Okay. Now, see, you got your iPhone. I, I, team iPhone. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I, I can't with um Android. I'm sorry, my Android users, but it's team iPhone over here. <laughs> what are some of your biggest fears? Have, let it, having one of my biggest secrets get out. That's my mm. biggest fear. So I guess I can't ask that because no. it's definitely going to get out. <laughs> no, I, I, can't, I don't like tell people privately. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really. Like, let it out. That's fine. I mean, that's obviously personal. So we will leave. That's, that's your only biggest fear. That's your only. You don't have no other fears. I my own, and uh, I think another fear would be, you know, being buried alive or like you're sw- or swarmed <laughs> by like by, by a bunch of you know, huge bugs or something. Like, right, right, like right. something from the Mummy movie. Right. <laughs> I can't. And being a young man in this society where you see things that happen like to Trayvon Martin and stuff like that. That is what I meant by walking down the street. I'm scared to walk by somebody's house and they yell out and say, and like pull out a weapon and I'm like 30 feet away from them and I put with my hands in the air on my knees mm-hmm. pleading, pleading with my life because someone felt like they were threatened by somebody and they can just get off the hook because you know by the, by the color of their skin, skin. Right. and I didn't like that at all like because when I went to school mm-hmm. um especially in the high school walking in the hallways I'm a big person so I can like bump people and act like they don't exist to me but one day I actually accidentally made someone fall and I stepped on them because I had my headphones in and I had some boots on and I didn't really see them Dang, so what happened? <laughs> I stopped walking. I stopped walking. I picked the person up, and I tried to be like careful. Instead of like walking through the hallway like a brick, I started like, like moving, a little maneuvering, bit. Yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, because you a big dude. Like you are a big dude for sixteen, and you've been six, almost six six for like your whole teenage years. Like from I've known you, you're like a big man. Like. <laughs> So I can imagine. So your mom said you have fascination with military history. Is like being in the military something you want? 
Uh, not I, I do love the military history because it can tell a lot about a country, mm-hmm. about what they've been through and why they have this. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do have some, some large fascination with military history. And what, why? Like what? Other than the. I think it's more of an exciting part of history. Like the only exciting part to me is politics that don't really interest me that much. Mm-hmm. Like royal blood and stuff like that. that don't interest me at all. Right. What about African American history? Even though they don't teach it in schools, they but... don't teach it in schools. Like almost like restricted. Mm-hmm. And I, my mom, try, I asked my mom if I can get some money for a book. I'm mm-hmm. trying for, for African American history, but it's a lot harder than you think because most African American history mm-hmm. is from actual Africans or a movie. Right, and I've been thinking. I've thought about it because I've seen it on um, Instagram. Uh, someone opened a um, all you know black owned you know uh, bookstore, and that's something I've been fascinated with too. Like, it's not enough of that out there. Like, it's not enough stories. And I actually purchased. So if you want to tell your mom about it, um. Because I want to learn more about my history. Because they don't teach it in schools like we, you know, like they should. They rather teach World War II and right. Egyptian wars instead. And so by urban intellectuals, they have black history flashcards. And um, they have, you know, different, you know, people from the history, from our, you know, black history. And they have like a explanation on the back, like basically saying who this person was and, and, and what like, they were about. Um, so if you want, you can tell your mom about this and see, cause I think it's very important for us to learn more of, about our history. Cause most Africans you'll learn about will be like, you know, Harriet Tubman, right. Frederick and, Douglass, um, and you know, like mostly, Martin Luther King. mostly during like the time, like 1960s or right. time with slavery and that's it. Right. Cause there were African royalty before. Right. Mm-hmm. And no one would know about that. Exactly. Cause they don't teach it. You know, if, um, like one of my episodes, a friend of mine, um, he came in and he was talking a little bit about, you know, um, black history. The name of that episode is called, um, my skin is black. So maybe you should let your mom let you listen to some of the, or you have an iPhone. So you can download SoundCloud because you really want to hear your episode. And I have seven episodes already. So maybe you tap into some of them because it's very informative, especially the, um, my skin is black. My friend, he went in on a lot of things. You know, he's a, a black man in the same society. A lot of, some of the fears of, you know, he talked about being pulled over by cops. He talked in how, you know, that has, you know, the experiences of that and like a bad experience at a job. He was the only black guy working at a shoe store and they pinned it on him, I guess. I don't know, he said, Somebody stole a thousand pairs of shoes, and because he's the only black guy, why not? They pinned that on him that he stole a thousand pairs of shoes, which messed up his life. He said for like his whole college years, because I think that stayed with you for like seven years, or and he wasn't able to get like a, you know, like what are you gonna do now, you know? It's like they use things like this to kind of bring us down and keep us. Especially in the military. Like you, like a black man will go to a recruiter. Mm-hmm. They'll ask about their financial, mm-hmm. uh, about their financial situation and see how much money they can make working as infantry. Right. Instead of like, you know, and like tank operators, person shoot the tank gun right. and put them in the very front. Instead of, you know, these smart black men who could be engineers, pilots, mm-hmm. like, um, and computer navigators or whatever. Right, right. We can, we can have like a lot of like generals or whatever. Right, but they put us in the back, in the, in the front line, right, in harm's way. Well, where do you see yourself ten years from now? I see myself ten years from now as in college or as an electrical engineer. Mm, that's what I want to be electrical engineer. Yes. Ma'am. Awesome, awesome, and. Who do you admire now and why? Right, I admire my uncle the most. Because okay. I've learned, wrote my uncle all my life, basically. Mm-hmm. He was, he'll be like the closest person I'll say to a father out of anyone else. Mm-hmm. But uh, I learned so, I knew so much about his life that he said, he told me that he went to Robinswood too and he struggled with some classes. Mm-hmm. And he thought he was stupid and stuff like that. But he really wasn't. He was smart, he was a smart man. Right. And now, he is well 
he has like the uh, I forgot what type of license it's called, but he has a license that allows him to drive any type of motorized vehicle mm. uh, on land. Is it CDL? Uh, yeah, CDL, uh-huh. CDL license. So he's a truck driver now, and he makes a lot of money from that. He, in two days, he can make a thousand dollars. Wow! And I think, and he didn't go to college, right? Because he used to work. He worked all his life at Frito Lay, and. He's from like a forklift operator mm-hmm. to, to overseer to manager right. to an entire plant. Now truck now he's a truck driver. Right. That makes a lot of money. And he only drives around Florida from like Jacksonville, mm-hmm. Miami, mm-hmm. probably Tallahassee. Right, 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 right. That's good. That's where you have that um male figure. Um so what are some of the things you would like to tell your mom that you normally wouldn't like? Just anything. I really try to help her because normally when she, she like to pin a problem on me, mm-hmm. like this broke, she'll so she'll look at me and say I did it or something like that. Right. Like one day, because I, I think it's just personal friend, like, like just my mom. Mm-hmm. Like one day we lost a wheel on our dog food, mm-hmm. and she well, she kicked me out. Mm-hmm. She she kicked me out for an hour, and and my brother was like. I don't know what happened to the wheel because I think we lost it during moving. Right. But my mom like acted like we like, someone took the wheel off the car. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, tell so me more what you would want to tell her. That I really do try to help her that most mistakes I make mm-hmm. are unintentional. Right. And that if I if I really can, I will help her to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't believe that, and I can't really can't say I blame her. But she believes it. But you know, you're a teenager, and we have to be kind of somewhat hard on you guys because if we if we don't teach you, and if we don't try to steer you guys the right way, like the world will, and the world is cold. Like the streets is cold, and they don't love you back. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you just have to be hard um but trust me it's for the better good (laughs) if you can start life over this is my final question Uh, if you can start life over what would you change and why if i can change anything from my starting my life over it would be my like a bunch of minor minor problems of mistakes i made Mm -hmm. that that could let something greater um like when I started football, um, stuff like that, like who I who I messed with, who mm-hmm. I didn't talk to, who I wish I talked to, and mostly I'll change why I did in fifth grade. Because during like fourth to fifth grade, mm-hmm. I had a lot of anger management problems and mm-hmm. I was real depressed. Mm-hmm. And since I was a kid wanting for attention, I was talking about suicide. Mm-hmm. And it, it was all lies. But mostly I was just mad right. a lot. So. If I can go back in time and change anything, I'll change the time I messed up in fifth grade. Right. And do you think, like, some of these, ang- do some of these angry moments and depression, is it, scar- do they stem from your dad not being there? I, I used to blame it on that, but mm-hmm. I think I just had a lot of problems with myself. Right, and you just had to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that's it. I think my daughter is there. Like, she has a lot of things that she needs to figure out, but... Like, we, we had a long talk last night, and I feel like she just, she'll figure it out. It takes time, but every teenager go through their different ups and downs. We all go through different problems, but you just got to take the time to figure it out. And, you know, just life gets better, you know? I mean, life's still going to have the ups and downs, but, you know, things get better, you know? Sooner or later. Sooner or later, I know. Well, Xavier, I am so happy you decided to come in and speak with me. Um, I enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed hearing your side. Like, as a, 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 a young man being raised by a mom, like, how you feel, how it has affected you, you know, roads it took you down and stuff like that. So, guys, again, thanks for listening. Again, you're listening to the Traveling Pants of a Single Mom also, if you have any questions and concerns, you can always email me, the traveling pants of a single mom, or you can follow me on Instagram um, under the traveling pants of a single mom. Thanks, guys, for listening. Love ya. You want to say bye? Oh, all right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you are so proper. <laughs>